fantastic time we've had this evening already praising God. This is an intimate time for Jesus. You can get the feeling from the readings, the emotion is high and the connection is deep in these readings. And you can imagine this is Jesus' last night that he is going to be alive before he assumes his resurrected body. And he chooses the disciples, the ones that he wants to spend that time with. And it's, an, it's interesting that evening that he mentions two things in particular. The first thing is that when John gives them the commandment that you must love others as you have been loved, it's the first time in John's gospel that we hear Jesus say, I love you. I mean, we hear, for God so loved the world earlier on, but in that most intimate way, as I have loved you. In other words, you've experienced it and now I'm vocalizing the fact. And how important is it for us to hear those words, I love you. How important is it for us to hear people for whom we are deeply connected? We ache for them to tell us those words, I love you. Nothing can really substitute that. And when we hear them, they never feel old. Doesn't matter how many times you hear those words, I love you, they never, never are old. And never ever, when we hear them, do we say, oh, I wish you'd just stop saying that. Never. We hear those words. And Jesus says it this evening to his disciples, I love you. And then he asks something very straightforward. I am going to the cross and this night I need you to be with me. And he says, stay with me. It's natural, right? Imagine if you were going for an operation tomorrow or you were facing something. Maybe it was a uh, not something as serious an operation, maybe it's just a job interview or maybe it's something like that, whatever it is. And you want the people that are close to you just to be with you in that time of preparation. Because the emotions are high. And when your emotions are high, whether it's anxiety, whether it's fear, whatever those emotions, you want the people who you love most just next to you. Right next to you. And... You know, I've been married for a long time, as you know, and there are times when my wife says to, you, says to me, I, I want you to be with me. And I say, but I can't do anything. You see, I'm a man. I figure if you want me to be with you, I have to do something. And she said, I don't want you to do anything. I just want you to be there. Just be present with me. Because when there is a deep love, just being present is enough. You don't even have to do anything else. Just being present is enough. And here Jesus is saying to his disciples, I love you. I'm going to this fate which is going to be cruel. It's going to be unjust. But it's something that I want to do because it's the Father's will. And I'm asking you to stay with me. And I'm not asking everybody else. I'm only asking you. It's a privilege that I'm giving you. And this is what Jesus says to the disciples. And of course, we know the story. They fall asleep. In quick time, bang. Jesus says, this is so important to me. And they go, yeah, of course it is. <laughs> They're asleep. And then he comes back and says, couldn't you stay awake? And they go, oh, you know, the spirit is willing, Jesus, but oh, flesh, weak. That's what he says. Good, stay awake. Back to sleep again. This is what happens. And yet we don't hear Jesus getting angry. But you can hear in the scripture the hurt. It's almost like I've been betrayed by Judas, now I'm being betrayed again when I'm asking you to stay with me. And then Peter's going to deny me. 
And when we hear this story, surely it's the betrayal that hurts most. Surely it is. Yes, of course, he knows, Jesus, that he's going to the cross. But surely when one after the other, what he sees is betrayal. Surely that, surely that must have been the most painful thing of the evening. And what's interesting is that despite all of that, and despite the fact that he knows this to be the case, what he gives is this amazing gift of Holy Communion. And you know the story, it came from the Passover, we heard the Passover, and the Passover is about freedom and liberation. You paint the blood on the door frame, and the angel passes over. In other words, by taking in, having the blood around you, you are safe. You are protected. God is for you, not against you. And what Jesus is saying is that you know how you understand this to be? I'm going to give you a gift that when you come into contact with this gift, just like if you painted the doorpost, you are protected, you are safe. God is for you, not against you. What a powerful gift that God gives to us. In other words, he says... Don't worry about the fact that people have let me down. And don't worry that you, me, all of us, will let God down. He's not concerned about that. His concern is that we know that he will never let us down, that he will always be with us. And he will always be with us. His presence will be with us really not just academically. That's the great thing about Holy Communion. Jesus is really there. Really there for our good. It's interesting when I was thinking about this whole idea of Jesus coming together and just the, 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 the disciples that he asked to be with him at this important time. And I think who you invite says a lot about the relationship you've got. And it's interesting, what I've noticed more recently is that depending on who's going to an event will determine if other people go or determine how much fun you'll have. You know, for example, I see increasingly when I ask some people, hey, there's a party or there's something going on, are you coming? And the first question is, who else will be there? I said, well, does it really matter who else is going to be there? This is the event. Oh, yes, it matters very much who else will be there. And as I thought about that, I think that's a natural human thing, isn't it? When we go somewhere, we want to feel comfortable. We want to feel accepted. We don't want to feel like we're on the outer. Initially, I couldn't understand it. I thought, well, surely the event itself is important. But I do get it. We don't want to be the one who's sitting on the outside. And do you know, on this night, Jesus put in place something that said, we are never, ever on the outer. What he said is that we will never, ever be made to feel uncomfortable because the presence of Jesus will comfort us and the presence of Jesus will strengthen us so that we will not feel uncomfortable. We will always be able to connect with him and in his presence, we will be more than comfortable. We will be well. Which is what we all want. We want to be well. So tonight, as we hear these wonderful readings, as we hear how Jesus instituted the Last Supper, how we hear how Jesus gave us this new command to love one another, what he said is that I choose you. I choose you to be with me. And when you accept my invitation, I promise that you will never feel alone. I promise you will not feel like you're on the outer. I promise that no matter what happens in the world, and there will be things in the world that perhaps will make you uncomfortable, never in my presence will you be uncomfortable. And there will always be a place for us to return to. 
where we can feel that intimacy. What we talked about the, before of souls deeply connected with those words of Jesus, I love you, be with me. That's what Jesus offers us each time we come back to him. So it's a beautiful thing. It's an encouraging thing. It's the nature of our God that we are not ever on the side, but we are always, always welcome, included, loved and accepted. As we continue tomorrow and we see how Jesus was rejected, we know that that rejection was so that we will never have to be. As we see him die, we hear that story of Jesus dying, we know that we will live we will live wonderful wonderful promise and so tonight we take a breath then we prepare for that in just a moment we'll take communion and may it be a time where we think through this amazing gift where god includes us and speaks intimately to us and then after that after that we'll have a time where we can stop and get ourselves ready for Good Friday. Why don't we pray? Thank you, Lord, that you speak tenderly to us, that in your word on that evening, you promise us presence and you promise us love. And, and Lord, we know that's your heart for us to be close to you. Lord, open up our hearts so that we experience that intimacy. Refresh us so once again we can feel that closeness and the warmth and the peace that comes from an intimate time with you. Lord, we know that you are always calling us to you, never pushing us away. Thank you for all you've done. In your name we pray. Amen.